this morning, um, I believe God has sent me with a word. And uh, if we read in uh, Ephesians 4 from verse 11, we see why the gifts was given to the body. The gifts is not for themselves. The gifts is for the body. The apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, and the shepherd. It's not for yourself. It's for the body. Because the word says his intention was. He gave gifts to the body and his intention was. So there's a specific purpose for the gifts. There's a purpose for the apostle. There's a purpose for the prophet. There's a purpose for the teacher. There's a purpose for the shepherd. There's a purpose for the evangelist. And the purpose is for the body. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not here to build our own ministries. We are not here to create platforms and images of success and for worldly image. We are here to build the body of Jesus Christ. This is the focus of the gift, the true gifts of God. You cannot apply for this gift because the word says he gave gifts. It is his, his plan, his purpose. It is his honor to appoint gifts to the body. And then many, many men and women of God start out very good and with good intentions in their hearts. And they start into, in the ministry and growing in the ministry. And along the way, things divert into things that are not godly. Then it becomes about money. Then it becomes about image. And then it becomes about le leaving my legacy, my legacy. Leaving things that are human and carnal. And then you get... Those in ministry in big names that get in trouble. They get in trouble with women. They get in trouble with men. They get in trouble with money. They get in trouble with power. And this is, this is our responsibility as gifts of the body to maintain purity of heart before the Lord. To be a co-laborer with Jesus and to remain a co-laborer with Jesus. Like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, he says... It says, I, I came to plant and Apollo came to water. Or Apollo planted and I came to water. But it's God that gives the growth. And why, why am I speaking this way? Because church, I was sent today to bring, I trust by the Holy Spirit, deep encouragement to Church Connect. Deep encouragement to you as the body, but also to Ruan and Yolandi. Deep encouragement. We know one another for a couple of years and... We were eyewitnesses when Church Connectors, Connected was planted. We were there at the birth of Church Connect. Paul and I was present at the birth. And you have come through many changes and many challenges, as do we came through many challenges and very, very severe opposition. Because something that is ordained by God and something that that comes from God, the world does not receive it. And we have an enemy that walks around like a roaring lion, seeking those to devour. And I'm here today to encourage you as a body, but also as a ministry. Because God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you in this area. We never plan to have a church. We came from a traditional background and then we go, went into the more, the, the um, what is Pinkster? Pentecostal side of the church. But we grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church and then we went into charismatic and then into the more Pentecostal side. So we have journeyed through a, a lot of denominations. And we have seen a lot of things. We have seen a lot of things. And at this stage in my life, we have the privilege to share the platform with big names in the country. And I'm just not, I'm not going there to, to make a point. I want to convey something. The purity of heart before the Lord Jesus Christ is our main responsibility. Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is our main responsibility. And we have seen a lot of things and we have decided as a couple we will never start a church. Hello. <laughs> never say never. We, because
because we have seen politics in the church, we have seen things going wrong in the church, we have seen a lot of things. And, and God, He hide it from us. It was hidden to us that we will have a church. So we were just as surprised as everyone else when we started the church. I thought that coming out of business and uh, we were fairly successful in our businesses and in 2008 God led us into full-time ministry and what we after, after a few years God has been speaking to us, speaking to us and you know if it's not broken why don't you don't fix it. You leave it alone. So we thought we can just sidestep everything and when the kids are big and grown up and out of school we will go into full-time ministry on our terms. And God took, in two years, He wiped everything from the table. What He once blessed, His hand was just removed from it. In two years. And we knew that we had to obey God. This is now time for God. And so we started from the beginning again, trusting God for 20 rand, 50 rand, 100 rand. Trusting God to, for, a, for enough field from Pretoria to Brits for our Bible study. Trusting every day, every day. We thought we knew how to trust God as long as we were successful in having the means to sow. And then we learned how to trust God. And these two people here also walk that road and is walking that road. So we are witnesses of their faith and their faithfulness in the ministry. And so we were eyewitnesses of this church, of this ministry, together with Bates and Volti and the leadership at that time. We, we were there when you were birthed. And well, why I'm speaking of Church Arise is that I ask God, you know, why another church? Why another ministry? There are so many ministries. We can just slot in somewhere, serve under leadership, you know. We can continue. And, and God said, no, this is not my way. I want you to do this. This is my will for your life. I called you into this ministry. And it was difficult from my generation and my culture as Afrikaner for a woman to preach. So if the roles were different, it's so much easier if the husband, if the husband preach, you know. <laughs> the wife can just be the wifey. It's so nice, you know. But so it, there was a lot of inner wars going on in myself and I had to overcome them, overcome my own tradition, my own uh, precepts, my own things in my own mind and also struggling with God concerning this. My husband had his journey moving from, from self-sufficiency and very successful to dependence, absolute dependence on the Lord. And imagine that for you as a man who is a breadwinner for your family to just leave everything and move into that place of dependence. So when we stand here today, it's not to boast in our faith, but it's to boast in the faithfulness of God. It is to boast in God's word that is true. Because we are here present today as living testimonies of God's faithfulness. Living by faith. And I'm, I'm absolutely meaning it, living by faith. We don't have a salary. We don't have security. God is our security and our salary. So this is why I can come today walking alongside you for many years and come to you and say to you, be encouraged. You have a plan and a purpose designed by God for this ministry here. And as we go through changes, God is testing our hearts and God is shaking and moving and sifting our hearts. And those times are not easy for a ministry. It's not easy for the leadership but because this is a planted church by the Holy Spirit there's a, a certain mandate and there's a certain anointing upon this church and likewise on church arise this is a sending church this is an apostolic church so people will come and people will go you will have visitors but you will also have a core of people that will grow together in the Lord Jesus Christ and from that group ministries will be planted. Amen? Amen. You are here to be trained by the leadership, trained in the word and in the spirit so that you can be fully equipped for your ministry work. 
your ministry work is two sides. It's, it, it cuts two ways. It's ministry work here in the, in the ministry, to serve here, to be trained here as to serve, because it is in this environment where you learn to serve. You learn to serve, even if you help with the coffee or tea or help with the setting up of the, of the sound. You're helping prepare for the service. The, the preparation in the, in the spirit via intercession and prayer, you are serving in the church. But Ephesians 4, let's go there. Uh, I'm just, I have prepared, but I, while I was sitting there, Holy Spirit is so faithful. So can we just follow him? Is that, is that okay with you? So, when we look at Ephesians 4, I want to come back to that and then I will go to another scripture. And uh, Ruan, just tell me what time must I finish. It's 3 o'clock, okay? <laughs> Trust me, I can go that long. <laughs> Half? Same? What time do you usually? Quarter. Okay, good. Okay. So let's go. Are you ready? You've got your running shoes on. You've got your notebooks. If you want to make notes on your, on your cell phone or you will catch it on, on YouTube, it's fine. So let's read from verse 12. He says, his intention, Jesus' intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. His consecrated people, I'm reading from the Amplified, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. So the first priority is to serve here. If you, if you want to get involved in the kingdom of God, this is the place where you need to serve first. And this is your training ground. This is how you learn to have a good attitude, to have a positive attitude, not to moan and groan when somebody asks you, the leadership asks you to serve. This is the place where your attitudes get sorted out. This is the place where you, you get your mind right. This is a place where you learn you know, to prepare for the ministry. Even washing and cleaning the toilets is preparing for, the, for, for those to receive, to come and receive the word from the Lord. So in the beginning, it was Paul, I, and Joshua. We had, ev we had to do everything, every Sunday, for three or four people. Faithfully, faithfully, sticking to it, sticking to it. Not with moaning, not with growing, carrying up the sound. You know, if you know Cassonia Crest, there's steps, and they're not even. I don't know what <laughs> happened in that man's mind. It, because it's two steps, then one, two steps, then one. So imagine that. Carrying up the sound, carrying it down, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And as we are faithful and we're faithful, God added. Because if you are faithful in the little, God has the freedom and the trust to appoint you to more. Amen? Okay? So this is the place where you learn. So it's the f for the full equipping of the saints for their ministering work to build up Christ's body. First is to help building the body. And that's why Jesus gave the gifts. The second is, the second cut is to, for your ministry, if you're faithful in the house, God will test you in the house to see if he can entrust you in the world. If you're faithful in the house with the right attitude, the right mindset, and you are grounded in the word, then he has the freedom, and now he can trust you to send you out for to maybe to start a cell group or a Bible study or a prayer group or a ministry. Now it's time for you to step out because you have proven to be faithful. If you cannot be faithful in the house, how will you be faithful in the world? Come on, church. Siela. <coughs> Selah means pause and calmly think about that. <laughs> calmly. Don't throw me. Calmly. Okay? It is the same in the ministry for me and, and for, for us in the ministry. And that's why I was referring to, you know, men and women of God that started out good. If God cannot trust me with my husband, and I, my husband he cannot trust me in the marriage, how can I be faithful to the body of God? If I'm not faithful in my marriage, how will I be faithful with the body? Come on, church. Come on, church. And this is where the men and women of God are being tested upon us three things. Petticoats, pennies, and power. 
Ich bin immer die Frau, wenn ich ohne Penis dann Bau. <lacht> But it is sexual things, physical things, money and power. Positions, positions of power. So this is where we are tested. This is the place in the house where you are tested so that you can be faithful on, to, towards that what God is calling you to do, sending you out. The second thing is, listen, it says here that I should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body. Second, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith. Oneness in the faith until we all, not just some. So the purpose of this ministry is to grow and be, be groomed in ministry, in servanthood. And then so that we can all come and might develop until we all attain oneness of the faith. Not faith, the faith. Because there's a lot of faiths out there. But the faith is the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The faith in the cross, the faith in what he did on the cross, the complete work. The faith and also faith, not works. So until we all attain the oneness of the faith, so we get rid of the dead works. And now we are in a living relationship with Jesus and our righteousness is not through obedience to the law, Romans 3 and 4 and Galatians, but our, our righteousness comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not our little stuff is here, but his stuff, his complete work. Now we are entrusting him and we have faith in that. So it's our purpose and our job. This is our job description. And if you are going into ministry and God calls you to have leadership in your home, your home cell or prayer group or Bible study or whatever, this becomes your job description. So just as in the world you will you know, apply to a job and then they will say this is the parameters of your job, this is your job description, so do we have a job description from the Lord God Almighty. And he says, listen to Amplified, so there is the perfecting, the full equipping of the saints for their ministry work in the house and outside of the house that we all might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. The full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. Not half knowledge, not broken knowledge, not fragmented knowledge, but full accurate knowledge of the Son of God. So this is my every Sunday, every Sunday this is our purpose because the Lord says in Matthew, jumping to Matthew 16, and it is that scene where Jesus asked the disciples, who do the people say I am? And Peter said, um, this and this and he asked Peter, no, he asked Peter, the disciples said this and this and this and he asked Peter, who do you say? I am. And Peter said, you are the son of the living God. And he, he, he said in verse 18, I tell you, Peter, and on this rock, on this rock, not Peter, because Peter means rock, but on this rock, this revelation, that Jesus is the son of God. This is the rock. Because Jesus says, I am the rock. It's not on Peter. It's on the rock, the revelation of the Son of God. He says, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. So, now we must understand, this scripture is so powerful and profound. The question I always ask is, who is building you? Because if Jesus is building you, then the gates of hell will not prevail against you. If Jesus is building you personally, and he's building you as a church, nothing that the enemy throws against you or towards you will be successful. Come on. Because even the gates, speaking of authority, because the gates is where the in and out is, the entrance and the exit. So that is where the point of entrance and exit is. That's a point of power. 
not even the powers or the authority of hell will prevail against you. So this is the question, church. Who is building you personally? Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And who is building Church Connect? And I know Ruan's heart, and I know Yolandi's heart, because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, we are fellow workmen. We are co-laborers with Christ Jesus. So if I don't build with Him, what am I building as a spiritual leader? If I build, I cannot build the church with worldly principles. I cannot build the church with business principles. I cannot build the church with worldly leadership skills. I have to be, must be a co-laborer with Christ Jesus. Because if he builds you, nothing will prevail against you. This ministry will stand the test of time. You will stand the test and the weapons that is formed against you. It shall not be successful because Jesus is building you. Amen? Amen. Are you with me, church? So our focus is not to, that's why, it's not about what, what is my legacy, what is my vision, what is my vi mission. No, it is what is Christ's mission for you because you belong to him. You are not mine, you are not ruins. You are not, you are not belonging to us. We are custodians of the church because God has appointed us and he trusts us. That is the terrible truth trust. It is with fearsome it is with fear and trembling that we are co-laboring with Christ because you are entrusted to us so that we can co-labor with Christ. You are the sheep of his fold. You are collectively church connect because you have to have, you need a name. We are church arise because we need a name. We cannot say we are under the tree the womb three fear no, we need a name. But in the spirit, you're part of the Christ body. You're part of a bigger picture. Paul says in Ephesians, you are part of the family above and the family ab below. You are part of a tremendous, mystical, big picture. The unseen and the seen. Those who went before us in the Lord, they are part of this family. They are cheering us on, sitting there and saying, go boys, go girls, go for gold, go for, go in faith. So they're cheering us on. Why are they cheering us on? Because they want us to have the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. And I, that's why it's important to be founded and grounded in Christ. Jesus says in John 15, you can do nothing without me. And so we will be very foolish if we try to do our own thing. We will be very, very foolish. And so the world comes with its pressures. And, you know, we see things on TV. We see big ministries and they do that and they do that. And when we try we do, to copy them, no, no, no. We, it's our responsibility to be at the Lord's ear. Because in every preparation for every Sunday, my question is, my question was yesterday. And when I came here is, Lord, this is your church. What, and you are the head of your church. What is on your heart for Church Connect? So I can be fanciful and, you know, you know, pull a rabbit out of the hat but, and be, you know, spook and pluck and all this. But in the end, when I go from here, what was laid in your spirit? What was the building block? What was the fruit? What is the fruit going to be when I walk out of this door? Will you be strengthened in your faith? Will you have a clearer vision? Will you understand that, you know, it is, it's okay to go through trials and tribulations because God is busy with the cleaning and the testing of hearts and, they, and just to remain focused on the Lord because you are His in the end. Amen? Amen. So we need to co-labor with Christ because he, has, he is the way, the life. Amen? Amen? And the truth. He is the way.
So we cannot come from the side and try to push you into something different. We have to co-labor, work together. Paul says it so beautifully. He said, I'm a master builder with Christ. And a master builder is a man and a woman with experience. It's a man and a woman that knows their tools, knows what, what is the purpose, how, knows how the house has to look. Because the architect gives the plan, like Jesus gives the plan, and we are the master builders with him. We have the vision, but it's his vision. And his vision church is a victorious church. That's his vision. Not a tail between the legs church that runs for every, you know, uh, every sound and everything. No, we are, we are here to, to grow up. And he says, why? Why are we co-laboring? Why am I here today? Why is Ruan and Yolandi here? He says that we might arrive at really mature manhood. The completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ and the completeness found in him. That's the vision. The vision is the image of Jesus. The vision is the completeness in Christ. The vision is to be a son, a fully grown son of God. Not speaking of a gender, but a stature. A mature. When you speak about the sons of God, we speak about the stature. The mature stature of Jesus Christ. Because Paul says in Galatians, there is neither man nor female in Christ. Neither Gentile nor Jew. There is no, no, no slave nor free man um, in Christ Jesus. We are just in Christ. As I'm standing here, I'm not Paul's wife at this moment. I'm a son of God. I'm bringing a message to the body of Christ. And the purpose is, that's why we labor. Paul says, I'm in travail again until Christ is formed within you. So every time you take your Bible, every time you pray, every time you spend time with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, the purpose of Christ, the head of the church, is, is to mature you. To bring a stature forth in your life. That when people look at you, they will see something of Jesus. And then six times, maybe when I come back or whenever I come back, I look at you, I see, wow, there's another portion of Christ being formed in you. Wow, I see the growth in you. Wow, can you believe Church Connect is growing as a church together in the image of Jesus Christ? That is the purpose, church. That is your creative purpose. Your creative purpose is not your ministry. Your creative purpose is to be formed in the inward man, into the image of Christ. Romans 8 verse 29 and 30. He says, we are predestined from the beginning to be molded and shaped and formed in the inward man into the image of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 from us 18 and 19 says, and we behold without a veil, as we continue to behold without a veil, we are transformed, we are transfigured into his very own image and likeness. If we, are, if we focus there, and this is my word to Church Connect. If we focus on Jesus and we just co-labor with him as the head of Church Connect, he will sort out the building, he will sort out the grounds, he will sort out everything. We just co-labor with Christ. Be faithful in the word. Be faithful in your ministry work. Be faithful to grow up in oneness in the faith. Be faithful into attaining the complete and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. Grow in stature. Grow in serving. Grow in Jesus. In the shape of Jesus Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he, 15, he said, We had the image of the world. We had the image of the earthly. We had the image of, of, of the material, you know, just you being human. But now let us carry the image of heaven. Come on, church. Let us carry the image of heaven. When you come in here, yes, it is a place to be equipped. Yes, it is a place to grow. It is a place to submit. And submission is only necessary when we don't agree. If we are all in agreement, there's no trouble with submission. 
Come on. Siela. <laughs> if we all agree, there's no need for submission. It is when we don't agree with the pastor, or we don't agree, then our submission is tested. And submission for me, Holy Spirit once told me, it is to sub to the mission. What is the mission? The mission is not to be whatever in the world. The mission is the image of Jesus Christ. To be strengthened in your faith and strong in your faith. This is the mission. So that you can be that city that is set on a hill. That cannot be in. Come on. You are here to be part of the solution. So when you come here to receive the word, find also a way to serve. Serve in prayer. Serve in the communion. Serve at the back. Serve. Serve. Because if you're faithful in the little, God can entrust you with more. Amen. God can entrust you with your household, your family, at your workplace. Because the purpose for Christ to be seen is to be that light that is set upon a hill. We cannot sit here and shine for one another. There's no purpose for all light to be together. Where is light needed the most? In darkness. I remember as a child, okay, many, many years ago, well, my, my mom and dad, they started out with a donkey cart, so they didn't have a vehicle. We were, they were living on a farm there, far north, near all days in Vivo, those places. So they traveled by donkey cart or mule cart. And so later on, my, my dad started a business and he bought his first Datsun. So, uh, uh, and so we grew and we got familiar, but we come from that background. And I remember going, visiting my aunts and, and in the, on the farm, my, my, my aunts' husbands used to work on the roads, the gravel roads, you know, plowing and making the gravel roads nice. And so they would travel for weeks and then come home maybe on weekends. So the women had to farm. They had cows and cattle and sheep and pigs. And so my aunts were very strong, strong women. Physically, she will clap you that you will. <laughs> Aunt Maggie, she, she, until the day she, that she didn't have electricity, she only had a, a, like a, a generator and only started in the evening. And she had this lovely voice. She sang gospel songs, but Buddha, you don't, you don't mess with Aunt Maggie. But when we travel in the evening and we had the breakdowns with the car, the first thing that you look for is a a light. The first thing you look for is a light. On the farm, you know, the lights are far in between. They are not. So you first look for a light. Even if it's a little fire at the kampong or wherever, like an informal settlement, you look for a light. And this is the same. We are preparing here to be that light for those who have a breakdown in darkness. And when you see the light, you travel towards the light. You don't go away from the light. You travel towards the light because you have a need. You need help. You need assistance. You need water or a pump or a whatever or a telephone. You need something. So you aim for that light and you go through the bushes and through unlevel grounds and you walk and when you come to that light you are scratched and bleeding because you went through the bushes and now you are at this light and you knock and somebody opens up for you and this is who we are this is our purpose on this world our purpose is to be that light for somebody else Who's sitting in the darkness of a divorce? Who's sitting in the darkness of a troubled marriage? Who's sitting in the darkness of sickness? Who's sitting in the darkness of depression and mental health issues? Sitting in the darkness of anxiety? Sitting in the darkness of financial stress? Sitting in the darkness of thinking about taking my own life? This is our purpose. 
This is why God has put us on this earth. In whatever way, church, if it's through teaching like me to this morning, encouraging you, bringing a prophetic word also of encouragement, being through singing, through bestows, through prayer, through Bible study, through whatever, through your workplace, to be a righteous man in your business, to be a righteous woman in your business, to deal accordingly to, with, the, with the word accordingly to the Bible, to be that light in the office, at the school, at the university, to be that beacon of hope when somebody looks at you and they are trapped or had a breakdown in darkness, that they can come to you and say, I need prayer. I need help. This is why we are here. We are not here to build a monument. We are not here to build something for ourselves. We are busy, church, with eternal things. We are busy with eternal things and why do I say it is trust with tremble is because God has entrusted you to this these two people with your innermost being and well-being your spirit man that is eternal this body will be clothed upon this body will go but our purpose our our calling, our mandate, our responsibility is that fearful place where we are working with something eternal within you. The way you perceive God, the way you experience God, the way you know God, the way you trust God. And that's why, church, for me and I know for Ruan too, this is not an easy thing for us. We are aware of the responsibility. And that's why I'm here today to encourage you. Set your eyes on Jesus. Set your eyes. We had to gather, we started to, out to gather in our garden under a tree. Not knowing if there ever will be a building. Not knowing if there ever will be what will be. But throughout the years, and this I can testify. There's a song, maybe some of you will know it. It's in Afrikaans and English, but the words in English says, Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race to be run. There are victories to be won. Every hour, give me power, keep me true. This is my prayer, this is my life song. Keep me true. Because it is very easy to get distracted, to get hopeless and discouraged. If you think you get discouraged, how much more do you think your spiritual leader get discouraged? Because there are times when we are so low, but we need to encourage you. So it's only through the grace of God that we are able to encourage you. That's why Paul says, pray for your leaders. Pray for the, your leaders because you don't carry the responsibility of eternal, uh, eternal assembly because this is an eternal assembly. Because Paul says the heaven, the family in heaven and the uh, family on earth. The family in the unseen, the family in the seen. So, and God has given us the grace. We are equipped by His grace. To be able ministers of this New Testament, yes. But we are also human. So we need your prayers. We need your encouragement. Many times when you receive the word coming from this pulpit and you are blessed, just come thank the teacher. It's not to, to lift him up on a pedestal. It's just to say, thank you for the word. Thank you for the word because those words give us fuel to come back next Sunday and to be, let's go church, let's go. We are going somewhere and we are not going somewhere in this world, we are going somewhere in our spirit. 
we are growing up into the image of Jesus. Where we walk like him, we talk like him. And that's why, that's why, and I'm closing, your wealth is not reflected in your bank balance. As a church, as a son and a daughter of God, your wealth is not reflected in your bank balance. Your, your wealth is founded and reflected in your relationship with Jesus. Come on, church. Because in this world, and we should have learned, you know that, that thing about history? The only true thing about history is that we don't learn from history. You know that saying? If we just look at COVID, that in one moment, every security was shaken. Every security. Health, finances, economy, worldly order, any, everything was shaken. Learning from that, stepping away from that, we have to realize that our wealth cannot be in worldly systems. Our wealth and security cannot be in finances. Our wealth and security cannot be in earthly material stuff. Our wealth and security is our relationship, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And as a church, with the Lord Jesus Christ. The more we behold Him, the more we worship Him, the more we spend time with Him, the stronger and the richer we become. Imagine, church, if you come back next Sunday and you have carefully carefully maintain your relationship throughout this week you spend time with the Lord doesn't matter you don't have sometimes when I drive that's my time with the Lord sometimes early morning that's my time of the Lord sometimes when I wait in a line in pick and pay that's my time with the Lord I snatch and capture times with the Lord I know when it's more efficient it is when it's quiet and early, but throughout the day, I capture moments with God. When I'm waiting, I don't get frustrated when I have to wait. Because now I can stand and pray. Or I can stand and meditate about a word that God gave me. So use your time differently. Don't get anxious and irritated. Go, go into your closet. Close the door. And pray. And the word says, and your father in secret will reward you in the open. So when you stand in, in that license line, don't do this. <laughs> you know, you could have... Thank you, Jesus. And then you go in. You don't hear the baby scream. You don't see how they sweat. They don't see how they bribe. They don't see how they... You are in the peace of God. And the next moment you're in front of the counter. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just use your time differently. Capture. Capture. Capture moments with God. And when you come back Sunday, you have a richness. You have a treasure. You are here to serve. Yes, we do go through challenges. We are not exempt. Please don't think that we are ever exempt from challenges. Even more so than you. We are not exempt. So just be sensitive towards the Spirit. Encouraging one another. Praying for one another. And greeting with one another. Uh, you know, with a, with a smile. Coming here with the attitude not just to receive, but to serve, to give. Give in a hug, give in a touch, give in an encouragement, give with a smile, give in the practical stuff. Your wealth is in your relationship, church. Your wealth and God will take care of the rest. Does he not say, seek ye first, first? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added. Come on. He speaks of, you know, eating and clothing and staying. So, Church Connect, seek ye first the kingdom of God. His plan, his purpose. What is his plan? His purpose. Christ be formed in us in this area. 
in this vicinity. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, coming to the oneness in the faith, not relying on the law, not relying on dead works, not relying on our performances, but just go laboring with Christ. Go laboring. Jesus, what do you have on your heart for today? When you start the morning, tomorrow morning, when you wake up, say, good morning, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? And just let him lead you through the day. Be that miracle for somebody else tomorrow. Be that light on Tuesday for somebody else in darkness. Be that help, be that assistance, be that light. The word says, you are a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. I tried. Really, because I'm an extreme introvert. Extreme. This is not my scene. This is not easy for me. I've trained and I had to train myself to stand here and speak. Because this, this is God. This what you see is God. This is not Alma. Because Alma likes to be quiet. Alone. You know? So you cannot be hidden, church. A light cannot be hidden. Especially in dark places. So be that light. Amen. Are you good? And God, he says, and God will add the rest. He will add. You remain faithful and you remain focused. And you remain faithful to the mission. Sub to the mission. And then you will be well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to pray, Paul, will you come? I want to pray for you, Landy and Ruan. Just a prayer of encouragement. And then I'm going to pray for you. Is that okay? You just stand with us, please, pastors. And then, will you stretch your hand towards them? You can stand. It's not you, so. We are need people, does that? I want to read the scripture because I can pray it, but it, it is so rich. This is your leadership, church. God has appointed and sent them to you. And it doesn't matter how it happened. It doesn't matter. It matters how we go forward. Okay? All is God. Word of God says all things will work out for the good. And today we want to bless them, but we want to pray for them as leadership of, of Church Connect. And what I pray is, Paul, will you just touch them? May He grant you out of the rich treasury of His glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality may Christ through your faith actually dwell and settle down abide make his permanent home in your hearts may you be rooted deep in love and found it securely on love that you may have the power and be strong Ruan, be strong Yolandi to apprehend and grasp with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth of it that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge that you may be filled throughout all your being unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself Church Kunik now to you now to him who by and through his power that is at work within you is able to carry out his purpose. Can I have an amen? amen? Carry out his purpose and do so super abundantly, far above all that we dare ask or think 
infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To Him be the glory in the church. To Him be the glory in Church Connect and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God bless you, church. May God bless you. Remember, if Jesus built you, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. If Jesus built you, every weapon that is formed against you shall not prosper. And every tongue that is raised against you shall be proven wrong. Because the word says, this is from me. This is from me. And this is your inheritance. It is your inheritance that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. It is your inheritance. It's your earth deal. It's a promise. It's such a... A profound promise and it's a promise that I'm standing on and standing on we as a family we as a church every weapon that is formed shall not be successful shall not and this I word I release over you as a ministry as leadership just hold on keep up the good work keep your eyes on Jesus and the rest will come the rest will come build with Jesus Build Jesus. Don't try to build something else. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for the way you have received us. The way you received the word this morning. May God bless you. And may the word bear much fruit in your life. This morning, through the Holy Spirit, He just cleaned the glasses, washed the eyes a bit. You know, in the morning we need to wash our eyes. So He just came and just focus, have clarity. And have peace. Godspeed. Because God is with you. Amen. Thank you.